I've been doing some financial reviews for my homies lately and a lot of them keep saying the statement, dang, I wish I would have known this stuff earlier. And it got me thinking, had I known this stuff earlier, I would have been better off as well. So here are the six things I recommend you do to set yourself up financially if you are in your teens. First and foremost, the best investment you can make is in yourself. And this takes on many different forms. So I'm gonna break down some good examples of what investing in yourself looks like. Surround yourself with people who are encouraging you, pushing you to be better, or even they're in a place where you wanna be at. We are the average of the five people we hang out with most. And oftentimes we're the average Average net worth of the five people we hang out with the most hang out with individuals who are going places because these are the people that shape you most the people you are spending lots of time with the influences you allow around you are a form of investing in yourself if you surround yourself with encouraging and ambitious individuals you are investing into yourself encouraging and ambitious traits next think of the type of person you want to be and then go gung-ho on creating the habits you will want to have for the rest of your life the most notable one are creating financial habits, which we'll talk about more, exercising, eating well, stretching, Man, I wish I started stretching way earlier in my life. We got one body and the earlier we begin taking care of it, the greater the longevity. Thirdly, be the hardest worker in the room. In your teens, it's not always that cool to try your best, but it's so incredibly important to develop a work ethic that is unmatched if you want to be successful. Above average results take an above average work ethic. The fourth way to invest in yourself is become an expert in your field. Whatever it is you're into and you don't have to be into it forever, I am a full believer of changing your mind if it's advantageous, but there is no substitution for expertise. Learn how you learn and take every opportunity you can to learn as much as possible. Shadow knowledgeable people and consume yourself in the things you like to do as much as you can. Fifthly, measure your progress. Document where you're at today so you have data as you work towards your goals. Data and decision making go hand in hand. In line with investing in yourself, here are three books I read in my teens that had a huge impact on my mindset. The first is The 4-Hour Work Work Week by Tim Ferriss. This is a classic. My favorite quote from this book that I'm going to paraphrase is everyone is trying to hit singles, so why go for base knocks when you could hit a home run? Basically saying everybody's just trying to skate by, which leaves the top wide open. This instilled a mindset in me that anything is possible and then I can achieve it by working smarter, not harder. Next, how to win friends and influence people. This book helped me socially. I know a lot of entrepreneurs talk about how this helped them with making business connections, but for me, this helped me navigate socially as a team. It gave me more clarity on what it means to socialize. My third choice is Think and Grow Rich. I read this book when I was 19 and it gave me insight to how powerful the mind is. I am naturally obsessive when it comes to accomplishing things that I want. However, this book showed me that if you are relentless about accomplishing something, it can become a reality. If I remember correctly, he opens the book discussing how he helped his born deaf son into hearing because he was so fixated on having his son here. I have all of my book recommendations on my site, so I will add a link in the description if you wanna see them all. Secondly, the degree you choose for college matters. This is one of my hottest takes, however, I believe it. Well, let me backtrack, college debt can be a considerable hindrance on your life, but you know what's not? Hitting the like button. Hit that like button for me right now, baby. Do it, hit it, hit it, you little. Hit that like button, it helps me build this channel out and get more financial information out there. When selecting a college, please be considerate of the price tag. I think community college is a great option as long as you're willing to stay dedicated to a timeline. Don't waste your time. Bang out those community college credits and make sure they are transferable to an affordable college that you want to attend. Then from there, Choose a major that will make you money. And here's why I suggest this. Student loan debt in 2021 is about $1.7 trillion. And the average student loan debt per person is $37,172. And the average student loan payment is $393 per month. The standard repayment timetable for federal loans is about 10 years. But research suggests that four-year degree holders it actually takes them 19.7 years to pay it off. So let's do some quick math. If you invested $393 over the course of 19.7 years and got a 10% return on your money, you would have $241,266.27. But instead, you take that time and we spend it paying off our student loans. Please select a major that will provide you a solid financial foundation, allow you to do the things that you love on the side until you can make it the main thing 
or just ball out for a few years and then pivot into the industry that you actually enjoy. Career changes are not as difficult as people make them out to be. Set yourself up for the future. I know it's an unpopular opinion when the alternative advice is chase what you love, get a degree in it, and then stay in debt for the next 20 years. But me, go to college, get a degree that's gonna make you money, do the things you love on the side until you can make them the main thing, and don't set yourself up for financial ruin for the rest of your life. Thirdly, follow the financial roadmap. Let's talk about financial habits and the road to jump on. First, learn to live below your means. So if you have a job, which I encourage you snag, doesn't have to be full time, just something to give you a couple bucks a week, learn to live below your means, which essentially just means spend less than what you make. Create a budget, it's your income minus your expenses mandatory expenses like gas and a phone bill, non-mandatory expenses like going to the movies and eating out with your friends. List all those expenses and subtract it from your income. Then with the money left over, do the following. First, build a small emergency fund. If you're on your parents' dime, it only has to be a couple hundred bucks. That should suffice if your parents got your back. Then here's what I wish I would have done. Open a Roth IRA. As soon as you turn 18, you're legally allowed to open a Roth IRA. This stands for Roth Individual Retirement Account. Here's why this is so important. The earlier you invest and the more often you invest, the larger your investments are going to grow. And this will put you so far ahead of the pack. It is ludicrous the earlier you start. If when you turn 18, you max out your Roth the very first year for 6,000 bones and you got a 10% return, by the time you're 59 and a half and you can pull it out, it's going to be nearly $299,000 off of a $6,000 investment. If you max out your Roth from ages 18 to 21, assuming the same return, 10%, you'd have nearly $700,000 by the time you're 59 and a half. Off an $18,000 investment over the course of three years, it'd grow to almost $700,000. Isn't that magical? Isn't that wonderful? The younger you are, the more crucial and important it is to pound your investments. To do this, go to Vanguard.com. You can use Fidelity, but I have a Roth of Vanguard, so I'm gonna say Vanguard. Then once you open your Roth IRA, you need to buy an index fund inside of it that follows the S&P 500. It also has to have a low expense ratio. You could also snag a target date index fund Fund. They pretty much just reallocate your assets as time moves forward for you. They're dope. I will put a link in the description to my full breakdown of them. And here are three index funds you could choose to invest in inside of your Roth IRA. I am not your financial advisor though, so invest at your own risk. VFIAX, VLCAX, VTSAX, or the target date index fund VFIFX. If you are under 18, you can have your parents open a custodial Roth IRA account on your behalf. You can also hit the like button and subscribe. The custodial Roth IRA is just like a regular Roth IRA, except it's a custodial account, which means your parents are in control of it until you turn 18. And then once you're 18, all the money that's in there is transferred to you and you have full ownership of it. And also your parents never had ownership of it to begin with. It's just a way for you to have an account that your parents control until you're 18 and then it's all yours. You'd open this the same way. I would just Google custodial Roth IRA and go to Vanguard's site and then pop one open with your parents. The income you contribute to your Roth IRA must have been taxed though. That means it has to come from a job because all Roth IRA contributions are post-tax contributions. So as long as you have a pay stub or you're getting this money from a job, something that you can show on your taxes, you'll be fine. And once you start making these investments, buy and hold. Don't tweak with it, don't mess around. Buy the index fund or the target date index fund and just keep pounding that index fund. Buy and hold, hold, hold. Try your best to max them out every single year. Hold them until you're old, watch compound growth do its thing, and bask in the glory of your giant investments once you're 59 and a half. Fourthly, please stay out of debt. Please, with everything in me, stay out of debt. Unless you're starting a business, investing in real estate, or investing in yourself, such as higher education or something like that, there is no reason to ever borrow money. In addition, don't spend on things that you don't need. Don't buy things to look cool. Don't overspend. Stay out of debt and stockpile that dough. And this brings me to my fifth point, which I was hesitant to include in this, but everything that I've seen from the teens these days are that they're hungry, they're dedicated, 
and they're willing to do what it takes to be successful. So to that I say, get a secure credit card. And here's why. The sooner you begin building your credit, the better opportunity you're gonna have when it comes time for you to invest in real estate at some point down the road. That's the real advantage. With nine out of 10 millionaires having investments in real estate, this is very important to include. Here are my rules to using credit cards responsibly. Pay your balance in full and on time every single month. You must do this. That is, there's no exception. You must pay your balance in full every single month. Personally, I pay off my credit card every time right after I make a purchase. As soon as it registers with my bank, I'm paying it off. There's no point in me holding a balance. There is no reason to have a balance on your card. There's no benefit. Next, treat your credit card like a debit card or cash. If you don't have cash in the bank to pay for it immediately, you can't afford it. Rewards points will never make you rich. Do not buy more on the account of rewards points or getting cash back. A $10 dinner is still cheaper than a $50 dinner with 2% cash back. Only buy things you need. If you don't pay off your statement balance, in full by the end of the month when it's due you're gonna end up paying interest on that money sucks if I was in my teens I would use my credit card to pay for gas and then just pay it off every time make life super simple by using your credit card on just one thing hard to mess up you'll still build credit and it'll make life really easy for yourself if you promise me to live by the laws of the credit card land you have my blessing to snag a secure credit card and start building credit as soon as possible. And the better credit you have, the better rates you'll get when it comes time to start investing in real estate. Lastly, if you have big dreams, keep them. Don't get discouraged. Anytime I've ever tried to do anything, I've always been met with, are you sure you wanna do that? That's hard. Starting a podcast. Are you sure you wanna do that? That's pretty saturated, that sounds hard. Getting a job in software. Are you sure you wanna do that? That's hard. Starting a YouTube channel. Are you sure you wanna do that? That's hard. Everything has a degree of difficulty to it. Forget the naysayers, go after what you want. Everything has a degree of difficulty to it and that doesn't mean that you won't be successful at it or that it won't be worth the effort. This is a broad overview of things I wish I would have done sooner or things that I did do that I'm super stoked that I did in my teens that have helped me set myself up financially. I plan on tackling topics such as index funds, secure credit cards, and the likes in more details in videos to come so you don't want to miss it. Hit the like button if you like this video. Please subscribe so you don't miss out on all the personal finance tidbits that I'm going to get you because I think you can be a millionaire. I know it's possible and I'm going to show you exactly how. Be sure to subscribe to stay in the loop. Comment below what your best advice is for teenagers or if you are a teenager, what's the best advice you received so far? See you in the next one.